Hello there and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine's newscast. My name is Valur Grætisson. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. Uh, there's no poly today. Uh, we are inside of Harpa. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes, uh, completely stolen from me. Uh, this is our uh, music culture house. Uh, and we're basically inside here because of weather, because it's not good weather outside and it wasn't safe to go to the volcano and it, would have been, it wouldn't have been enjoyable for everyone. But I'm not the only one that is actually seeking shelter here. You can see people in like old costumes all around me. And I mentioned that a little bit later on. But first I want to tell you, of course, uh, about that uh, our walking tours, uh, me, uh, well, walking tours basically with Polly, but me and Bjarkmar will tag along and tell you a little bit about uh, Iceland, what, what makes an Icelander Icelanders. So you can find our tour, just download here. Uh, and uh, also, uh, by the way, uh, like if you want to subscribe, uh, I, I would really appreciate it, mostly because it's okay, you can come here. We're actually showing you also. If you want to subscribe, then please do, because it really helps us to reach more people and uh, it's, it's, it does wonder for us. So keep it in mind, be appreciated. If not, of course, you do what you want to do, but we are now going to do news. Here's the thing, uh, before we go into the grim news, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about what's happening here. Every year, this is the, the college we call in Icelandic, Verslunar Skóli Íslands. It means basically business school of Iceland, but it's a regular college like everyone else. Every year, they actually dress up like this, these gentlemen over here. Yes. Uh, and these, these guys and girls, of course, dress up like it's 1700 or 1800 to celebrate uh, like the, the past of Iceland and so on. It's a wonderful day, but they usually go downtown where they uh, like they're having like they're learning these old dances and they are celebrating our old heritage. So therefore, uh, these these kids are all around here. These are kids from 16 to 20 years old, <laughs> and as you can see, they're all very young and silly. Ah, I think we are. <laughs> But of course, I have to tell you about the news. Uh, the biggest news today is basically that there was a man. <laughs> All right. The biggest news here is basically that there was a man that drowned in Sky Lagoon. He was in his 20s, very young, and he was found uh, unconscious, unconscious uh, on the bottom of uh, this new, very wonderful pool, actually. Uh, they, the police say that they believe this is an accident. There was nothing, uh, uh, not, not, they don't suspect uh, murder or anything like that. Perhaps he had a heart attack or whatever. It's, it's, it, it does happen, but it doesn't happen often. So uh, we're hoping the best, of course. Uh, we have often covered Sky Lagoon before, and Sky Lagoon is a wonderful spa kind of pool, similar to the Blue Lagoon, but there are very important differences between them. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't really mean anything. It just means that Icelanders are quite shocked that a young man was found dead there. Uh, it's not an everyday thing that happens in Iceland that a uh, man in his 20s uh, are drowned. <coughs> Also, uh, other news is basically uh, today is the last day in court when it comes to this murder we call Rauða Gerðis Málið. Rauða is basically where a man was killed, it's the home, uh, and the man was killed like shot by a, a gun with a, with a, the shooter was like with a silencer, and he killed the man uh, in the night uh, with, his, uh, with his gun. This is said to be uh, uh, like uh, this murder was uh, connected to the underworld. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a complicated story, but what we know is that uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, alleged crime lord in Iceland, crime boss, uh, he there was uh, outed that he was actually a uh, informer for the police, and this. Uh, 
there was some uh, like uh, un unsettling in, in the underworld, if you want to, I uh, want to say it like that. Of course, the underworld sounds like a fairy tale, this is, of course, far from it. Uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, it's sad that these men were like very angry at his crime boss. They threatened him and his children. And a few months later, this man was, uh, a man was murdered. He was shot multiple times uh, with his silencers. Uh, and, uh, and this man called uh, Angelin Sterkai was arrested for this murder. Also, there are a few other people that are prosecuted with him. Uh, one is, there's like a driver, uh, there was a woman, there was like a spotter, I guess, and such. And the prosecutors say that this was very well rehearsed, execute, and nothing else. Uh, this is interesting because we have never had a murder case uh, which is like this, uh, like planned out, if that is the truth, of course. Uh, this is the last day in, in court, uh, and the, the, the lawyers say that the lawyer of this, Angelin, says that uh, like uh, he was not uh, this was not something that uh, was that planned out that he was actually afraid of his own life and he did this in self defense uh, it doesn't sound very like uh, probable either but uh, i mean let's see how the verdict goes of course uh, but this case actually when when the, the prosecutor rests their case it takes 4 weeks to get to the conclusion uh, unless in a very, it's very seldom that it's not like that, but it could be in this case perhaps. But four weeks, then we have a verdict, uh, and I can, like this man that shot him, is always going to prison. The only like uh, question is like, is it for uh, this planned execution, or is, was he doing this in self-defense? But keep in mind, in Iceland, it doesn't really matter. We don't, we're not that big on like the self-defense defense. Uh, meaning that, uh, if, for example, if you kill a person, you're, you're most likely going to get your 16 years. But there is a difference, of, of course, of like if you kill the person because, uh, like, without knowing that it could actually lead to his death. Uh, we have had uh, people that have got into a fight and one punch have killed a person. Uh, and uh, the, those uh, verdicts are, tends to be much, much, much lower. Uh, also, murder in Iceland, the highest, uh, highest uh, like, uh, prison time that we are uh, almost always uh, uh, sentencing people to is 16 years. That's like our life. So we also believe that uh, we should actually, what do you say, like uh, there should be, we believe that people can be better. When I, the prison system should make people better. Not, it's not uh, just uh, uh, storage for, for bad people, you know. <laughs> But uh, uh, this is very different, of course, from countries. But uh, sentences in Iceland are not heavy. Uh, and 16 years for a murder example sounds for some, like in the US, for example, as not as a high uh, sentence. Uh, and to the culture, uh, I, I need to tell you about this because I love video games. Uh, Wind, Island of Wind, it's an Icelandic video game um, that Parity is uh, producing. Uh, is, uh, is coming out, uh, hopefully next year. Uh, and this, this game has been, was, uh, uh, it was uh, like IGN was covering it, and uh, the trailer is, is a smash hit in Icelandic standards. They have over 140,000 watched it, uh, which is, of course, for us at Direkta Greipan, not that much. I mean, we have, we have had more than 140,000 or, or multiple videos, of course. But this video game is obviously gaining some tra traction. And one of the, like, the interesting thing about this game, in my opinion, is the era that they are, uh, uh, the, the, like the setting of the game. It's not the old Viking era, but it's like, uh, in the, like 16, 1700. For example, these kids here, they dress exactly the same as uh, like uh, fancy people did in the <laughs> 1700s. So the thing is that uh, this game is also, uh, it's about uh, the, like, a very humiliating and hard time in Iceland. We were under the Danes, the Danish crown was then uh, our colonizers. Uh, and we also uh, had something we called the change of ethics, where we became like a borderline, like religious, uh, not uh, country almost. Because Icelanders used to be very religious before we became almost non-religious. <laughs> Uh, this means that, uh, uh, that uh, like this era, we also had these 
very uh, harsh laws. We call it story domer. It's like uh, the, the big judgment. And this big judgment was, was like, uh, I, I wouldn't say like, like uh, it was like a religious law, basically. It was, a, it was all about, uh, was all about, for example, was all about uh, like you, how you behave, uh, how you like, you could not have a child out of wedlock uh, and, and such. And of course, these laws, like always, when it comes to like religious states, they were really, really harsh on women. And the main character in this game is a woman. It's a very fascinating and interesting story, actually. Uh, I'm, I don't know much about the game, but I know much about the era, and it's 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 quite interesting. So uh, check it out. You can fi find it on ITN. Everybody knows ITN, right? Uh, so it's it's a wonderful thing. Also, the captain of the Coast Guard ship T has been suspended. Uh, they think that he is uh, he is uh, not think they, he has been. Uh, uh, accused of sexually harassing uh, the crewmates, two crewmates, with some women. Uh, our Coast Guard is a big deal in Iceland. They are like our, I wouldn't say army, I wouldn't say it goes so far, but it, it's, it's like uh, we, we respect the, those men very much and we, uh, we trust them when our life is in danger. And these men are almost, almost uh, always uh, trustworthy. Not almost, they are just always trustworthy. Uh, we have to go here. Uh, so the, it, it's an ongoing investigation. We, ha we don't have any uh, like conclusion or anything for it. Still, it just came up earlier this week, so we have, we're still to see what will come out of it. Uh, but it's definitely interesting. This is the first case we've seen, and I think uh, uh, like there have must must have been much many other cases because being a sailor in Iceland, I've always been a little bit. Uh, it, it's a rough job, that's for sure. Uh, also. Uh, the church in Grimsey just burned down. It's from 1886. Uh, it was probably electricity that burned it down, but the, this has been a very much of a shock for the town uh, people in Grimsey. And there are only 100 people that actually live there. Live there. You can find coverage about Grimsey in, uh, on our website, grapevine.is. For example, in the summer, this, the sun never sits down. You can see it like, go ha almost all the way down, and then it comes back down, up. Uh, it's, a, it's a magical place. It's a very, very interesting and odd place, to be honest. Uh, and of course, this, uh, this has been a, a lot of shock for the... You know, everything is closed here. Jesus. It's COVID. Or... So, <clears throat> and in the end, uh, Kolbeinn Sigthorsson, uh, he is a, a footballer, of course. Uh, he, he was mentioned in this uh, huge scandal when it came to uh, our football association in Iceland, or KSE. Uh, and he uh, was, uh, he, uh, in uh, two or three years, was accused of uh, sexually harassing and attack two women. Uh, and he ended up striking a deal with them. He paid them compensation, as well as like an uh, organization that are fighting for the, uh, like they are helping like, victims uh, for sexual abuse, uh, but uh, the, like the, the chairman of, of this football association, he stated in an interview that he had never had any complaints about sexual harassment uh, ever. But uh, this, victim, this victim of this culpit then uh, stood up, came out uh, and talked publicly and said that uh, she informed them at the time uh, and they knew well what had happened. And therefore, the chairman have actually resigned because of this. And there is a lot of uh, unrest all around the football uh, world right now because of exactly this. But uh, Kolpet, uh, he is now going to sue, actually, KSE, or, or the Football Association, uh, basically because he said he did strike a deal with his girls. Uh, there were two girls, two victims. Uh, and they were fine with it. And they have said also that they were, of course, they were satisfied with uh, his apology as well as the compensation. Uh, and therefore, it was, there was no reason for the, for the Football Association to uh, take him out of the national team like they did. And that meant that uh, he couldn't play with them. And he, would, uh, he was in quite the trouble like, with his own uh, uh, club, which is in Sweden. Uh, and uh, he is now like his job is hanging on a thread, and he is, and he, he is not very happy about this. But uh, the football association in Iceland is playing hardball. They don't want to apologize for this, uh, and they are quite, 
uh, they, they stand with their decision to do this. So it's going to be interesting how this will go. Uh, my best guess is actually that this could go to court. And in my opinion, it's always interesting to see these cases go to court, be mostly because I used to like work in as a crime reporter, yes, before, <laughs> and I like court cases. Uh, but uh, it's also just when it comes to these Me Too uh, cases, it's, it's always interesting to see them go for court. Uh, and in Iceland, at least, uh, only, only a handful of them have actually ended up in the, the courtroom. And uh, mostly, like, the, uh, the people have, uh, like... It has been, like, uh, like uh, mostly it hasn't been very be beneficial for the, for the doer, if you will, uh, or whoever has been accused of, of, of whatever. So, I'm going to show you here. Let's go all that. Uh, this is all that we have for uh, uh, for uh, Regia Greipans newscast. Uh, again, just remember, of course, uh, our uh, our tours. Uh, they are wonderful. They are fun. It's brilliant to meet you, of course. Uh, and also uh, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps us out when it comes to finding people. Uh, no, for people to find us, right? For them just to see us, <laughs> right? Uh, and we will, of course, go uh, again to, to the mountain as, as, as soon as we can. Uh, if you ever come to Iceland, this is, of course, the, the Icelandic Symphony Orchestra. This is their home here, actually. Uh, and they are, in my opinion, one of the best bands in the world. But, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm just me. One opinion, whatever. So, uh, see you then. <laughs>